Hello, my name is Andrea Tavera and I'm going to show you some videos of different suturing techniques. I hope they will be helpful for your practice. Simple suture is the most common suture that you will be using in wound closure. Some tips. Grasp the needle where the proximal and middle thirds meet. The needle should enter and exit the skin at a 90 degree angle. Match the bite depth and the bite width on both sides of the wound. The skin edges should be averted by making the width of the bite greater at the deepest part of the wound than at the surface. This is not recommended for high tension closures. For these wounds, other measures such as very deep dermal sutures or undermining may be necessary. Use only foot forceps or a tissue hook when handling tissue to help prevent crushing the tissue. Simple body suture is the suture that we will use for placing deeper sutures to reapproximate the skin before putting the skin suture in, usually with observable suture. So we start deep and then go superficial and up in the dermis, taking care of not piercing the skin. And then on the opposite side, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna go superficial and then deep. Make sure you are entering the same place where you exit on the other side. So just as superficial as you are on one side, you must be superficial on the other side. At the end, both threads of the suture are now deep. It is important that both ends are on the same side of the loop. When tying the suture, we will gently pull it along the length of the wound. This method helps us to reduce tension on the skin, making it easier to bring the wound edge together and achieve a nice skin closure. Vertical mattress suture are also called the far, far, near, near stitch because of the configuration. You're gonna enter far from the wound, travel under the skin on the bottom of the dermis and go far away about the same distance on both sides. And then you're gonna turn the needle around come back and do the near near to the incision. What this does is to pull the tissue between those throws together and are useful in order to take tension off when there is a lot of swelling edema or in wounds with a higher risk of dehiscence. A horizontal mattress suture is where two stitches are placed in the same horizontal plane next to one another. You can think of this as two simple sutures. What you'll do is you'll enter the skin now as if you would for a simple suture. It is important that you are on the same distance on both sides. You will take your bite on one side and then the other side. Now, instead of tying a simple suture, turn your needle around advance the suture and move the same distance you would for your simple suture and enter in the same way almost like you are doing a simple suture on the other side you will go back so you will end up on the same side tie the suture strands together and cut this type of suture has the advantage of being faster than two simple sutures A variant of the horizontal mattress suture is the half buried mattress. So you start in one side in a horizontal mattress way, and then on the opposite side, you remain within the dermis in a horizontal manner, employing a subcuticular approach. Then you come back 
and you exit in a horizontal mattress way again. When you tie the suture, you will only have marks on one side. We use this technique a lot in plastic surgeries. If there is an area where you don't want suture holes, for example, in flaps, where you want to avoid to interrupt the blood supply. This is a simple running suture. We're gonna start with a simple suture. You will tie your first one with your instrument tie. Make sure your suture is the right length for the task. Long enough for the job, but not so long that it becomes difficult to handle. Now, we're gonna move along the same distance each time. You enter the skin in one side and on the opposite side, again, enter just in front of the exit. Don't forget to take a 90 degrees bite each time to avert the wound. Next, the most important is to take the exact same bite each time and advance the same amount each time. When pulling up, be gentle just so that the skin edge touch. Putting up on the suture very hard, it is just ischemic and can cause a bad scaring. This is the simple looking running suture. First, you take simple bites and tie your first one with an instrument tie. The same as simple running suture, you advance into the wound, make your first stitch by taking a bite and the second bite on the opposite side, just in front of the exit. The difference here is that you can lock the stitch each time. Before you pull up completely through, you take the needle and you pass it through the loop. And now you can pull it, so now it's like pull it close down and it locks down. And then you go ahead and take your next stitch. Make sure it's come back through the loop. This feature is useful when you need to control bleeding, for example, when you have incisions in the scalp. At the end of the suture, you can end just by grabbing the loop and then doing your instrument tie. This is the subcuticular running suture. If you use absorbable suture, you can start by burning the knot. So you will go deep in the corner away from the skin and you will do your instrument tie. This allows the knot to be buried. Now with the knot deep, you're gonna go deep and then superficial. That bring us right up to the corner and this is where we're gonna start our suture. Just in the epidermal dermal junction, you should make horizontal bites to advance. The key here is to make consistent bites on each side, maintaining the same depth and the same amount of tissue each time. Your needle should enter right in front of where it exits without going too far backward or forward to prevent the wound from puckering or creating a dog ear deformity at the end of the suture. In the subcuticular running suture, the skin is closed without leaving any suture material outside the wound. This is why this technique results in a more cosmetical closure. At the end, you will bury your knot again. To bury the knot, thread the strand through the loop and create a new loop. Tighten it until the end and repeat this process three times. Finally, pass the strand completely through the loop and tighten. Now, take the needle deep into the dermis, bring it out farther away to bury the knot. Now, we're gonna suture this curved wound. As you can see, the length of the inner edge is shorter than the length of the outer edge. This time, I'm gonna start with the knot on the outside of the wound, but you can also start with the body knot. If the knot is outside, you should enter the skin and start in the edge, in the dermal area. The most important about curved wounds is to compensate the skin to prevent a dog ear. In this case, we will close it using a subcuticular running suture. 
To start, we will take larger bites of skin at the edge of the longer length wound and a smaller bites in the shorter length wound. You should also take a look at where the suture is coming out and make sure the needle may need to go slightly farther back along the front edge. This type of closure is applied, for example, in plastic surgery to close the areola when performing periareolar mastopexis. Here, we have a skin edge with a smaller inner circumference and a skin edge with a larger outer circumference. The way shape laceration is a little bit more complex. The key here is that first we're going to bring together the apex. That is a tricky area. You're going to start by enter the skin on one side, travel under the skin until the corner, and then you're going to pass the needle under the tip of the flap at the same level of the stitch. That is in the subcuticular dermal area, getting a big enough bite coming in in one side and coming out on the other. Then you are coming back through the other corner of the wound. Enter in the dermal layer and exit through the skin, keeping the same distance from the edge as the suture on the opposite side. Then tighten the knot and that's gonna bring everything together. After this, you can close your three different wounds in the way that you prefer. Simple interrupter suture, horizontal mattress or simple running suture. Now, we are going to correct a dog ear. First, let's recreate one. For this example, I'm using a layer of pig skin that I bought at the supermarket. When we don't align both edge of the wound properly with sutures, we generate a dog ear at one of the ends. There are several ways to correct it, and in reality, I would consider that exist three options but I'm going to show you the one that I prefer because it has consistent results. You can plan where the resulting scar will be located. So here we already have one dog ear. So first we mark the spot where we want the resulting scar to be, which will be on the same side as the dog ear. We cut it and then pull that piece of skin downward to figure out where we should make our new cut to achieve proper alignment. We mark the cut in the skin and that's it. We bring together our new defect using sutures. Sometimes when we want to minimize the length of the resulting scar, we can descend it as little as possible and then attempt to align the two lengths of each edge with sutures as we saw in the example of curved wounds.